You know, it was, it was a visionary act, Act 221. Mm -hmm. it, we'd never seen it before in Hawaii. Take a tax incentive. It's more that you consider this an incentive. This actually changes conduct in the business community. So where somebody might have gone into one way of spending his life, now this is going to change his life. It's going to help him make a business. And not only a business, but a business that has, that has world-class quality to it. A business that will give him high leverage and give us the benefit of that high leverage. It's like a battleship. You have to change its direction. The state is, is involved in certain very few industries, you know, hotel and military and construction and all that. If we want to be a 21st century state, we're going to have to be, we're going to have to have, to have a 21st century economy. We don't have that. We, we didn't have it in the 90s when Act 221 was conceived. We have to go in that direction. It isn't easy. It costs money. You have to make sacrifices when you change the direction of a battleship. But remarkably, it has worked. People, I think, they, they oppose it. They attack it because it costs money. But the, but the truth is, if you want to change the direction of a battleship, you have to make that kind of sacrifice. And let me just add that, that the point of Act 221, again, was to change investors' behavior, which is, which is what it has done. It has caused investors to now invest into Hawaii, into Hawaii's companies, the creation of intellectual property, such that now you're going to diversify the economy. And the other point I want to make is most QHDBs or qualified high-tech businesses or Act 221 companies will, will also get money uh, financing from outside the state. I can speak for my own productions. Typically, half of the budget will come from outside the state. So we're talking about an infusion of offshore money coming into the Hawaiian Islands, which normally might not have been here. Besides. The, it's Hawaii's own residents investing within Hawaii companies. So the, the net effect of all that money is, is somewhat hard to, to measure. You can measure the amount of investment, but the whole trickle down of all that money that was spent, for instance, for my productions, the hotels that, that, were, that we, we could book all, the, all these hotel rooms when we were doing a production, and as well as the cab driver, the caterer, the, the maid, everything, all that money gets spent down into Hawaii's economy. Then you know, even in our caucus, we speak as you gentlemen have been speaking, and it's a tough sell for us even among some of our colleagues, but it's where the educational component that we need and with the data to be convincing, it just somehow doesn't communicate to those who kind of see business as usual as satisfactory. You guys are pioneers, you're revolutionary. It's, it's, it's a different... You know what people don't realize, it's something Jason was alluding to, and that is, so yes, it, it costs, the tax credits cost some money. But there's a multiple of maybe three, four times that of the money that is brought in from individual investors here and lots of, lots of money from the mainland that we would not otherwise get. So you, you spend a dollar, and then four dollars comes in in the way of investment. That's what I would call a good deal. And then it's maybe five or six dollars is actually fed into the state economy. So you're, you're getting a great return on your investment, so to speak. Well, you know what I thought was kind of fascinating, and I'm going to go from, you know, kind of like moderator to <laughs> almost talking about the uh, 221, is one of the things that I thought was fascinating is when you're talking about research, you know, you can go for a federal grant and then they give you grant money, you know, and they front the money. Well, this was kind of ingenious. It went the backward route where it said, okay, if you have an idea and if you can get other people to believe in that idea, to the point where they're going to give you money, you know, and risk that money with you. And you do this research and you do this development to get a market, I mean, to a product up to market. Then you can possibly get this back when you start making money. So it's kind of, you know, for me, you have other people bringing in their money to stimulate, to, have, to grow, to start jobs, grow jobs. Um, add more money to the economy, and then the Hawaii, when they've benefited from this spending, then can kind of give it back to you, you know, as an incentive to stay here, as an incentive to develop that business, versus going, here I am, I'm government, I'm going to go out there and I'm going to say, okay, here's a federal grant, I want you to apply for it, and then I give you the money, you know, and you do your research. Um, <clears throat> So I thought that was kind of a, a really neat way to go about it, and you're encouraging entrepreneurship. And one of the things that you guys have talked about was energy. And I'd like to hear more about that because we are focused here at the Capitol about 
energy independence. Mm -hmm. We are also focused on STEM in schools. You know, let's talk about that a, a little bit. Do you have any comments regarding those two things? Energy is the hottest thing of all right now. Mm -hmm. You know, you asked Jason to list some of the fields. Well, energy, the, the year 2008 and nine is all about energy because there's a lot of people now involved. There's a lot of investment going into energy, just like there is elsewhere. Uh, and it's very promising. It's a great career. I mean, imagine you get out of high school or college and you want to you know, put your career somewhere. What a great place to put your career. You know it's going forward and you know it's exciting, it's green, it's beneficial to everyone. So we, we actually are a great laboratory in Hawaii for energy. And we can do amazing things in so many different fields. I mentioned algae, but there's also uh, uh, photovoltaic and solar of all kinds. Mm -hmm. There's ocean power, there's wind. Okay. Um, uh, there's, it's four or five things. Mm -hmm. Who knows how it'll end up? Mm -hmm. But the point is we can, we should, we are to some extent doing first class research, cutting edge research right here. And it's with the benefit of 221 money. And I was gonna add that if you take that away, if you make it hard to get, if you threaten investors by you know, m m giving them more hurdles to, to pass through before they can make their investor, that money won't be around. Mm -hmm. They don't care, they go somewhere else. They do go somewhere else when they're discouraged. It's not easy to invest, and if you take their money away, it's gonna stop. Well, here you go. We have an investor here. Mm -hmm. Could you give me some feedback in regards to an investor's mind? Mm -hmm. You know, whether it be investing locally, mm -hmm. investing worldwide. Mm -hmm. Let me hear about that. Well, as, as Jay said, that, that the invest, right now, energy is the hot sector. We will see you know, at least three or four different business plans come through every day on just energy, the energy sector, because that's where everybody wants to go. Because there, like you said, there's a lot of good benefit. It's it's green. It's it's where we can really get our stride. But as an investor, uh, what we worry about is when we're depending on Act 221 to help the investor get over the hump and make these risky investments. These investments are risky. Mm -hmm. uh, make, let's make no doubt about it. All these investments are... Research and development. Any mm -hmm. type of private equity is the highest risk investment you can make. You can, the lowest would be a bond, and then you could buy some stock would be in between a publicly traded company. But private equity is the highest risk investment. I mean, the statistics are something like uh, maybe one or two out of 10 investments you make in any one company will actually go to fruition and actually get some return. Mm 